So welcome back. We are doing lesson 7.5 and um, this is called maintaining your identity. And maintaining your identity is you're starting to get into trig identities. And this is a really big deal in the land of um, like pre-calculus work and um, people who take the class called trig. So um, because you're in the class that you're in, you learn some of the trig in this class to make it as an easier transition. Okay, so let's get started. It says that you'll be able to derive and justify trig identities today. And it says statements like the distributive property of multiplication over addition and associative property of addition help us work algebraically to change the form of expressions into more useful forms. What are some of the properties of trig expressions that might help us change the forms of trig expressions in useful ways? Okay, so <clears throat> um, we're going to get started. It says right triangles are the unit and the unit circle provide images that can be used to derive, explain, and justify a variety of trig identities. So for example, how might there, this right triangle here help you justify why the following identity is true for all angles theta between zero and 90. Like why would that necessarily be true? Okay. And so when you think about this, um, this is true because like if you look at this angle in here and generically angle B, how would you find angle B, right? So the measurement of angle B, let's say that you knew angle A, it was 20 degrees. Therefore, B would be 90 degrees minus that 20 degrees. So what if the angle was theta degrees? Then it would just be 90 minus theta. And you, so what I want to write out is sine of theta. And so I'm going to label this as A, B, and C. The sine of theta, so go here to the opposite, would be A, because remember we're thinking about so, it would be A over C, right? It'd be A over C. And then it's, um, so that's A over C. And then it says cosine of 90 minus theta. Well, who's 90 minus theta? Oh, that's angle B. So they want to know the cosine. So this guy in this case right here, this would be cosine. This right side would be cosine of B. Well, the cosine of B in this case would be the adjacent side, this would be his adjacent side, adjacent to angle B, that would be A over, and then remember cosine is ka, hypotenuse, which is C. Do you notice anything? Do you see how A over C equals A over C? So A over C equals A over C means that we just proved that sine of theta equals cosine of 90 minus theta, okay? So now that we've proved it, now we can use it. So in your notebook, I put a, um, a trig identity sheet in there that looks like this. And these are all the trig identities, um, not all of them, sorry. These are some of the trig identities. And some of them we already know. So I kind of wanted to um, highlight the ones that we already know just so that we're all on the same page. Um, we just learned um, this set, right? We learned um, these even and odd ones. And because we learned about cosecant, secant, cotangent, we can attach those ones to this and say we've learned those as well. Um, and I think that's all we've learned so far. Yes. Okay. That's all we've learned so far. So as we go through this, I'm going to be highlighting so that way you can use um, your trick sheet too and know which ones 
like you should definitely run to because there's a there's some on here that we're not going to use at all okay we're not going to get to actually okay and so back to 7.5 okay the next one says, since we have extended our definition of sine to include angles of rotation rather than just the acute angles, right? Um, so in a right triangle, we might wonder if this identity is true for all angles of theta and not just those between zero and 90. And then, so then you're wondering, okay, does this work for all of them outside of the first quadrant? Okay, so a version of this identity that uses radian rather than degree measure would look like this. Sine of theta equals to cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. And so now we're looking here, okay? And so how is this necessarily true? So they give you a really good picture um, to use. You don't even have to add anything to the picture. Sometimes when you're proving things or justifying things, they'll give you something, but they won't give you everything. So here they gave you everything. So I'm going to start you off by pretending that we know this point right here and it's m comma n and i i want to remind you that the because we're in the unit circle we know that sine of theta is equal to um your y coordinate and your cosine of theta is your x coordinate okay so this is in the unit circle and we've already talked about that. Okay, so if you reflected it across the x equals to y, it would be this point right here. Now, if you remember from our um, our function, um, our land of functions, whenever we reflect anything across the y equals to x line, we're actually finding the inverse. So when we find the inverse, we all we do is we switch our x comma y. So now I'm going to write this as n comma m. n comma n. I said it wrong. n comma m. So I know that when I reflect it across the um, y equals x axis, I'm also knowing that it's um, that that angle um, is different. Okay, so here we can write <clears throat> the sine of theta is equal to n, right? We know that. And in this case here, down here in blue, we know that down here, this is the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. And you might be wondering, well, how do you know it's pi minus pi, pi over 2 minus theta? When you're doing reflections, um, one of the things that you might remember is that when you reflect, there's a 90 degree angle there. But more importantly, oops, um, we want to remember that it's pi over 2 minus theta. Okay, pi over 2 minus theta. So if you look at theta, let's see, where's your, do you see this little, hmm, how do I get this? Hold on a second. So in terms of the, why it's called considered pi over 2 minus theta, this angle here, um, is because if you see where pi over two is, that's this angle here, oops, that's this angle here. And if we take pi over two and we subtract theta, we get this little angle in here, okay? Well, I guess I, let me use a different color so it stands out more. Um, we get this little angle in here. That's pi over two minus theta, which is equal to this guy right here. Okay, that's his reflection, okay? We know that his, like look at cosine, cosine is also equal to n, his n, okay? And so because n equals to n, we could use substitution 
and that fills us in with sine theta equals cosine of pi over two minus theta. Okay, so what we're what we just basically proved right here is this identity. Okay, and one more time, it has to do with us reflecting it across the x-axis. And when we reflect it across the x-axis, um, remember that's the inverse of things. So our x and our y switched. That's what inverse means. And so we got this identity. So now I'm going to find that identity on our trig sheet and see if um, we can highlight that one. Where is that one? Okay, so this one actually does, oh, there it is, it's right here. So these are called the co-function ones, and we just found this one. Um, we found this one, and now because we found that one, we can essentially use all of these. The only other thing I wanna add to this one up here is the one that we just said. Um, I guess you could add Sokotoa if you want. Go ahead and make this sheet your sheet. Um, but the other thing that I just wanted to add that we use is in a unit circle. Oops. Oh, I'm at the top. That's why I can't do that. Sorry. In a unit circle, right? Um, cosine of theta equals to the X coordinate and sine theta equals to the Y coordinate. Okay, so we're just going to add to this every now and then just so that we are all on the same page. Okay, so the next one, it says there are a variety of ways to discover, explore, and explain trig identities. For example, in the previous lesson, we used the unit circle to show cosine negative theta is the same as um, cosine of theta, right? And you can kind of see that here in this picture. See the cosine here is equal to the cosine here because it's the same x units over this way, right? We can also use the angle of rotation of the, ta um, of the tangent to say that tangent theta equals to y over x, which means tangent theta equals sine, co sine over cosine, since y equals sine and y equals cosine. So remember that tangent is y over x, and since y is sine and x is cosine, Therefore, tangent of theta equals sine over cosine. So now I'm going to highlight that sine over cosine, which similarly means that you can kind of take care of cotangent the same way. So all we're doing is we're figuring out which of these are helpful to us. That way, when we look at that trig sheet, we know which ones we can we should look for. You can also use a graph to show that two trig expressions are equivalent. For example, we have already observed that y equals sine of negative theta is the reflection across the horizontal axis. So this guy here, sine of negative theta, uh, let me highlight you in pink, is the reflection across the horizontal axis of the graph of y equals sine, right? And which leads to the identity that sine negative theta equals negative sine theta, right? So I think we, I think we highlighted that one, sine of, yeah, we did right there, the even and the odd. Okay, so let's continue. So now it says, um, oh wait, did I, oh yeah, okay. So here's the graph. So these strategies are preferred over right triangle to justify a trig identity since they show trig identity is true for all angles of rotation and not just acute angles. So do you see how it's stronger to use the graph than it is to use just a right triangle? Okay, so um, so now we're gonna move on. So it says here's an important identity known as the Pythagorean, Pythagorean identity. And you'll see why it's called the Pythagorean identity. It says sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Kind of sounds familiar, right? Know that the convention for sine theta squared so basically here, they're just telling you and reminding you that sine theta squared, so you take the angle, you find the sine of it, and then you square it. We write it like this, and those two mean the same exact thing, okay? So when I'm squaring the sine, I'm squaring um, after I've taken the sine of that angle, okay? 
So it says use a right triangle to show the Pythagorean identity is true for all acute angles. Okay, so um, when I draw my triangle and I have this here and this is a theta, um, I'm gonna make the hypotenuse one. So therefore this guy is, um, this guy you can just label him as A, right? So, or you can label him as sine theta, right? Because no matter what he is, that's exactly what sine of theta is, right? Because sine is so, and sine of theta equals to the opposite, whatever that length is, so let's say it was a, it would just be a over one. So that's just the same thing. So it's sine of theta. Okay. So I can label it as sine of theta, and I can label this side as cosine theta, and then I can find the Pythagorean theorem on that, which would basically be sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one squared, right? Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And then simplifying, I get sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. So there goes another identity that I just learned. And now I can use, so I'm going to go back to my trig identities. And here they are. There's three trig identities that you can use. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, tan squared plus one, and cotangent plus one. So once I get one of them, then I really get all of them, okay? It says use a different way to prove it. Okay, use a different way to prove it. And so I'm gonna bring you back to the unit circle. So here's my unit circle. And I could choose any point on here, right? So this would be labeled as X, this would be labeled as Y, and this is a unit circle, so it's one. And because we know that in a unit circle, Y is the same thing as sine, so really this is just X squared plus Y squared equals one squared. But because X is cosine and Y is sine, we could write cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals to one squared, which is just one. So here, I just proved it two different ways. And I proved it the stronger way using the unit circle um, because in that right triangle, I'm limited to only using um, the ones that are, um, the thetas that are smaller, that, that are acute. But here, I just proved all of them, okay? So I know this feels a little foreign, but what I'm trying to get to is getting you comfortable using these identities to um, eventually solve equations, okay? So it says, use the graph or unit circle to help you form a conjecture of how to complete the following statements. So we could use graphs if they want. And so it says, how might you use the representations to find additional supporting evidence that your conjectures are true? I'm going to be using graphs and a little bit of algebra to find this. So the very first thing I do is find sine of pi. Let me close out some of these guys. OK, but apparently I've been using the calculator a lot. Um, OK, so I'm going to go with sine of pi minus x. And I'm going to make sure that I'm in radians. And I'm going to look at this graph and I'm going to be like, oh, do you look familiar? And I'm like, wait, you look like sine's graph. Because if I look at this window here at zero, it looks like an S. So let me prove, let me just find the sine of X and see, oh, look, they're the same. So sine of pi minus theta is the, oops, is the sine of x. Oops, not sine of x, sorry. I was talking in terms of desmos. This should be theta. Sine of theta, it's the same. So what they're trying to say here is if you go to theta, which is right here, and you move it, um, let's see, if you put it upside down, and then, sorry, if you reflect it across the x-axis, and then you add pi, you're back here, right? Or subtract pi. So this is just saying, look at how we can shift this. Give me one second. Okay, for this second one, it says sine of theta or sine of pi plus theta. 
So I'm going to put, I'm going to change this to plus and see what happens. Plus is completely different. So let me turn this guy off. Who is that? So my S normally goes middle, high, middle, low, middle, and now it's everything's upside down. So maybe I should try putting a negative in front and turn that on. Oh, it's the same. So th um, theta, mm, pi plus theta is negative sine theta, which makes sense because if you think about just regular sine x, right? If you look at the red one, right? And then it says you add pi to it. Remember, x is always in backwards land. So it mean, means that to shift it left. So if we shift the red left a whole pi, we get to that black one. Is it black? Or, yeah, that's black, right? So if I shift this, my red left pi, all of these points left pi, that's exactly where I end up, right? Using my shifts. So that makes sense. I'm skipping these cosine ones on purpose, okay? And then let's do sine of two pi minus um, theta. So this is two pi, two pi minus theta. Let me turn all these guys off. Okay, and who does that look like, right? And so you're like, oh, it looks like the negative sign again. And it's exactly the same, right? There you go. So those are exactly the same. So this is going to be the same down here too. So this is negative sine theta. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing with my cosines and see um, if, if they make sense the same way. So I'm going to do cosine this time. Turn this guy off. Turn this guy off. Oops. Let's go cosine. This one says cosine of pi minus theta, in this case is x. And I want you to look at this guy and you, I want you to recognize him. And you're like, oh, it's like an upside down V, Miss Johnson. So maybe it's minus cosine. So let's just do regular cosine just so you can remember what cosine x looks like. Looks like that. But we want everybody to flip. We want the green guy to go down here when he's up. We want him to be low, and when he's low, I want him to be up. So I'm going to put a negative in front here and see they, they converge and they're the same. So here, cosine of pi minus theta is negative cosine theta. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with cosine theta plus pi. And it's still the same. It's still the same. I didn't even have to change anything because he's that upside down. And last but not least, I'll do 2 pi minus theta. And, oh, this is wrong. So let me turn that guy up. Oh, he just looks like normal cosine. So let me erase my negative. Yeah, it's just normal cosine. Okay. So that's basically how I'll do those, um, just to make sure that everybody understands the way we do those. Um, and then I'm going to go over here and make sure that all of those are highlighted, which some of them are here. Um, some of them, here's a couple of them, these periodic ones that we kind of, we kind of did these. And because we get those, then we can always get those ones. Okay. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do it says we can use algebra um, along with some fundamental um, trig identities to prove identities. For example, how can you use algebra and identities listed um, above to prove these identities? So we're going to use all of our the ones that we know. Okay. So it says tangent of negative theta equals to negative tangent theta. So I'm going to tell you right now, one of my very first rules whenever I'm doing anything with identities is change everybody into sine or cosine. Everybody, 
everybody gets changed to sine and cosine. So tangent theta, if you remember from our trig sheet, tangent theta is equal to sine over cosine. So I'm going to use that um, fact right here. So I'm going to leave the left side alone, um, and then I'm going to change the right side and then see if I can get anything on there. Or, or you can change the left side to make it look like the right side. Either way you do it, it should end up the same. So I think I'll change the left side. So I'm going to change this to sine negative theta over cosine negative theta. Oops, not alpha, theta. And I'm like, oh, we just did our things on this. So sine of negative theta. Oh, did we do this yet? Sine of negative theta. Oh, we didn't. So let me go back to my trick sheet. Sine of negative theta. So now I'm looking. Oh, there it is right there. Sine of negative theta is negative cosine. And cosine of negative theta is just regular cosine. So I'm going to use these two identities right here, right? To, to prove this. So here's my little side. Sine of negative theta is negative sine theta. And cosine of negative theta is just cosine of theta. This is the odd and even guys, right? So this turns into negative sine theta over cosine theta, right? which if you think about what negative tan theta is, negative tangent of theta is just negative of sine over cosine. And because these two are equal, then I'm done and I'm happy. So identities are kind of neat because you already know the answer. You're just trying to get one side to look like the other side, the other side to look like one side, or both of them to look like the same thing, okay? All right, let's try this one. It says tan of pi plus theta. So whenever I do these, I always try to, um, I always try to take the one that looks more complicated and make him look like the side that he looks more simple. So the left side looks more complicated to me, and I'm just, I'm just going to use um, the the tangent of theta equals to sine theta over cosine theta. I'll try to you put the identities off to the right so that you know which one I'm using. So because that's true, then I'm just going to write this here instead, right? So now I'm going to write sine of pi plus theta over cosine of pi plus theta, right? And then I'm going to be like, wait, I know this one because we just did that. So it's up here. So sine of pi plus theta is this guy right here. So that's just negative sine. So let's write that out. Uh, sine of pi plus theta equals to, what did it equal to? Negative sine. So this guy right here, the top is negative sine theta. And then let me see, this one's cosine of pi plus theta. He's right here, right? So I'm going to go with cosine of pi plus theta equals to negative cosine theta. Is that right? Yep. So this is negative cosine theta. And the negative divided by negative is going to cancel, right? So I'm just left with sine over cosine, which is exactly what this is. So whenever I'm doing these identities, I my one of my strategies is always getting everybody in sine and cosine. And because these are the same, then I'm done and I'm happy, right? That's all. Okay. This last problem that we're going to do, it says, suppose you know sine of theta is negative 0.75 and your angle is somewhere between pi and 3 pi over 2. Wait, what are they talking about? So between pi, this is pi, 
and this is three pi over two. Oh, so it's my angle somewhere here. Got it? And you're like, yes, I get it. Okay. So it says, um, use the Pythagorean identity to find the following. Okay. So the Pythagorean identity, if you don't remember, so let's just write that out really quick. Okay, so the Pythagorean identity is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals to one. So you want me to plug this into there? Yes. Okay, so then I put negative 0.75 <coughs> squared plus cosine squared theta equals to one. Yes, and then you just solve it. Okay. So I don't know what 0.75 squared is. So negative 0.75 squared. Um, I should have put parentheses, but I didn't. There is 0.5625. So that's 0 0.5625 plus cosine squared theta equals to 1. Right? So I'm going to subtract that. So 1 minus 0.5625. And I get cosine squared theta equals to 0 0.4375. And just like before, you would take the square root of it. Don't forget plus or minus. It's really important in this case. So um, it says... Now I want to take the square root of this. So I'm going to go parentheses and I'm going to go square root. Oh man, let me go backspace. I'm just going to do it. So the square root of 0.4375 is about 0 0.66. And this is a plus or minus, okay? So I'm going to take you back to our picture. In this quadrant, oops, in this quadrant right here is my is my cosine meaning my x coordinate is it positive or negative and you're like oh it's negative okay so then i'm going to circle my negative so the cosine is negative 0 Okay, why is it negative, Ms. Johnson? Because in that, in that quadrant, our cosine is negative. Remember, we did all students take calculus. And in this quadrant, since tangent is positive, that means cosine is negative. And plus, you can see the x coordinate in this quadrant is negative. Okay. For this one, I'm going to use the identity tangent theta equals to sine theta over cosine theta, which equals to negative 0 0.75 over negative 0 0.66. And whatever that equals to, that is going to be my tangent. So negative 0.75 divided by negative 0.66 is 1.14. And those are my answers. Okay, so this was a pretty hefty lesson. Um, it's pretty like dense. The biggest thing that I wanted you to learn is be comfortable with using your signs and your cosines. Um, my biggest advice to you is just keep referring back to that trig sheet and be familiar and be like, oh, I can probably use that one. Okay, so because I know which identities I'm going to use, I know exactly where to look for them, as opposed to you, you're still learning. So it is okay if you're still learning these identities. Thank you so much for listening.